How's it going? Welcome back to the Haas Media Studio. And today we're going to be doing some recording with amplifiers, electric guitar and amplifiers. So I brought my, my trusty little micro cube, my wonderful Roland micro cube, which I actually happen to like a lot. It has a lot of great kind of sounds and abilities to it. Very small speakers, got some customized sounds in it already. It's got some effects built into it. But by and large, I just have a lot of fun with this amplifier. It's not the greatest amplifier in the world. No, we could probably do a lot better. But anyways, this will give us uh, some idea of what, uh, what can we can expect when we start using microphones and we point them at different parts of the speakers. Here's the thing, when we're, when we're recording amplifiers, the first thing we have to sort of figure out is, uh, where's the speaker? Uh, so you have to actually sometimes shine a light through the grill and look at it if you can't see it, if it's not immediately apparent, you have to shine a light through the grill and sort of see if you can identify where the cone is or the cones are, if there's more than one. So what you want to do is make sure you have a good idea of where that speaker is before you start putting a microphone in front of it. So then we want to sort of think about the distance, of course, how far away from the amplifier do we want to get our microphones. And that's sort of a, a bit of a taste thing. A lot of times for amplifiers, we go ahead and get the microphones right up close to it because we find that even though that's not necessarily a natural way to hear the amp, it's a good way to capture the amp uh, at, a, at a good place and then we can use other effects and reverbs later to sort of enhance it. What I wanted to do was sort of get some idea of the differences that we get when we use the same mic at different positions on the speaker. So what I have here today, I've got three SM7s, good old Shure SM7s, uh, they're pretty good for two things, really. Snare drums, they're great for snare drums, and they're great for electric guitars. A lot of guitar players probably go, gee whiz, do I have to use a 57 again? And no, you don't really have to, but it's a good starting point. If you're doing electric guitar, especially if it's doing rock guitar, it's, it's a very good starting point for a microphone selection. You have other selections, we'll get into that. Uh, for jazz, maybe not so much. You can use a, a, a nicer condenser mic, something with a little bit more, uh, a little bit more body to it, a little bit more character. But for our purposes today, we're just going to use a, a, a SM57 because I happen to have three of them. And so what I've done here is I've positioned them so that the, one of them is pointed directly at the center of the speaker. And it's a, I guess it's probably about like a six inch, maybe eight inch speaker there. Six, I don't know. And so it's pointed right at the center of the speaker. Then I've got the, this one next to it just as close as I can get it to the other one. And then this one on the far, farthest out is just looking at the outside of the speaker. So we're going to get three different looks at the same speaker with the same microphone. So what this can hopefully do is give us some idea, well, is there really a difference if we move our microphone to different parts of the cone. Why, why wouldn't it just always be the same? Why would it be different to sort of place it at a different point in the cone? Well, let's find out. Okay, so we're back here in the console room of the studio. So here's what I've got going on. I've got a direct box I went ahead and put in here because I like to start in the guitar chain, just go ahead and have it hit a direct box first so I can capture the clean signal of my guitar in case I want to apply it later to a amp farm or to a plug-in or to reamp it with a really nice amplifier later, just to have that option. It's nice to have it. I may be just completely super happy with this tone as it is and never ever worry about it, but you know, this is our business. We like to sort of cover our behinds when we can here. So anyways, I got my guitar. I got it plugged in here to this direct box I've got sitting right here on the, uh, next to the computer. The output of this is going over here down to this instrument number two. And instrument, we have these wonderful things here. We have six different instrument input outputs that go all over the studio. So I can plug an instrument cable into this and then have it come out, an instrument cable out on the floor and have it go into an amplifier and I don't lose anything. It's great. I can also patch those instruments from one to the other so I can actually be on the floor, plug into the instrument on the wall, come in here, patch it through to the isolation booth so I can be on the floor playing guitar and the amp is in the isolation booth. So that's one of the great things about the design of a studio is that they really accommodate us for that. So you'll enjoy that, I hope. So anyways, we're going into the instrument number two. That goes out to the wall panel out there. That's then going right to the, uh, to the guitar, into the input of the guitar. So 
hitting the direct box first, going out to the instrument, out to the floor, and then on the floor it's going to the amp. So also, just so you know, how am I recording this direct box? I have the output, uh, the XLR output of this now going over here, and there's two uh, inputs, two mic inputs on this AV panel right here, where you can plug into one of these, and then you can go over to the patch bay here, and come out of the output of the patch bay here, and go into the input of the MTRX directly. So uh, we won't really get a chance to do a lot of patch bay work, unfortunately, until you get to campus. But that's one of the ways that we can go ahead and record this to a track in here. So I've got everything routed, and I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. I'm going to go for a track. Let's get the guitar here. Excellent. Now let's check it out. Let's check these out here and see what kind of uh, situation we have with these different microphones. Hey there, here's the 57 check session. And as you can see, we've got four tracks. Uh, we've got our electric guitar direct. I just plugged my guitar straight into the direct box and got that before I went to the amplifier. So I just got that onto a track. Let's just hear what that sounds like because that's kind of cool. <laughs> Real dry, real transient, no amp, just guitar. That's what comes from the guitar. Sometimes you can blend that sound in with the rest of your sound to get a little bit of that sound, and that's kind of cool. But for the most part, what you can use this for is have it in your back pocket if you need to do a reamp. If you decide later that you like this performance uh, you recorded, and you didn't like the amplifier, you didn't like the microphones, you've got this direct track, which you can then use later to reamp. And we're going to show you how to do that here in a video coming up, how we can go from the DAW out back to the patch panel, out to the guitar amp, and put that sound into the guitar amp again, where you can then put a mic on it, record it, put that back in your DAW with an amazing guitar sound if you need to. Or just run this into an amp farm or your your basic uh, 11 rack or whatever you've got for your guitar sounds, plugins. This is, this is a good insurance policy. We've got three 57 tracks and this all the same microphone, all the same level. I've got 57 centered, that's the one in the middle, mid, which is one right next to it, and then off is the furthest out. 
This one was a bit quieter. I actually had to turn it up 2.6 dB to get it to be the same level as the other two because they were the same level at the preamp. And we're going to go ahead and solo through these. Uh, we'll start with the center and I'm going to work my way to the mid and then to the outside thing and just listen to the difference of one inch difference along this the speaker here. Okay, we're starting with the with the, with the center. <laughs> And I'm going to change it halfway through this next break. A little different. Really different on the out, on the one, on the off. That's the center. Wow. Mid. Off. Center. Mid. different sounds just one inch over on the speaker and this, and this is true for most guitar speakers too as it turns out there's different frequencies come from different parts of the cone especially when you have your microphone very close like we have we're also getting a lot of proximity effect too so we're probably going to get a little bit more low end than we probably normally would if we had those mics further out we can notice right away the center one has a lot more high end frequencies the teeth the grit that's going to kind of get us there for the teeth of this guitar sound but we get off to the mid and we get a slightly different frequency spectrum it changes the mid range just a little bit there's a little bit of a phase shift there that's kind of cool and then we get to the off one and it's almost like a different amplifier sometimes we don't get near as much of the high end very much of a different tone to it so I highly recommend downloading this session and listening to the differences between these because you can also add these together and if you find that you add them together and they diminish the, each other somehow, then I recommend trying to put a trim on there. Well, let me just show you what I mean. If you wanted to play the center and the off together, we might try taking one of them out of phase. So let's get the let's get our trim over here. I'm gonna bring it in and out of phase and just watch this right up here while I do it. Okay, we don't want to do that because that just takes away all the stuff that sounds. Lots of possibilities with just two 57s and positioning in the microphone and just where you put it. So now that we've sort of tried out some different positionings along the cone, now I've just gone ahead and got a bunch of dang microphones out. I want to sort of see if we can do a little comparison shopping. Because what we do a lot of times with electric guitar amplifiers is we don't just use one microphone. We'll use two, sometimes three. Not usually more than that because we'll start getting to more phase issues. The more microphones are seeing the same thing, they're all different distances apart. We have a thing called phase, which uh, I'm sure I've talked about already, but we'll talk about more even later. It's one of the things we want to make our friend, not our enemy. So the more microphones that we're going to actually use to record something, we have to be careful with it. We usually like to have two, maybe three microphones on a guitar amp to get different uh, textures, different uh, frequency responses that the microphones give us. Uh, to the same thing, to the correlated information. So in this case today, I've got a special little fun house for you. I've got my micro cube here again. And this time, I've still got my 57 uh, in the center position, so we can use that for a reference. And then on top of that, I've got two more, I've got my other two 57s. This time, rather than at different points on the cone, they're kind of actually clustered around the center one. And then one of them is an inch back or about the length of a capsule back, and the other one is two inches back, or two lengths of the capsules back. So I'm kind of going to be very curious to hear what kind of differentiations I get that between that and the center 57 again. So we might learn something about that, uh, which could be fun, because again, if these two microphones are slightly different from the same source, there'll be some comb filtering, and there'll be a frequency that'll be enhanced, and a frequency that'll be diminished in nulls and peaks. Uh, that's, so we like to use that as our friend. Maybe something will happen cool with that. On top of that, I've got 
a bunch of other mics, mics out here. I've got my 4033 again, and it's a little further back because I can't really get that. It's too big a mic to get in close. I've got my KM184 in there real close uh, next to the 57. I've got my RE20 in here real close. And I've got my Royer 121 in here real close. And all of those are looking at the same plane, the median plane of the, the amplifier. Very close to it, and they're all looking at it at the same distance as much as I could make happen here. And I've, I've shown you this in the photograph. They're, they're gonna capture the information from the speaker all at the same time. So what we won't, we won't hear any differentiation of distance or phasing between them. We'll hear what each of those microphones catches pretty much closely as we can to the same thing. Uh, just for fun, I just thought, what the heck, let's pull some microphones back a little bit and see, or see what that happens if we blend those in as well. So I've got two of my, my nice ones. I've got my 414 back exactly two feet. Uh, and I'm just going to put that in cardioid. It's kind of close enough for, uh, for that. And then I've got the Neumann 87, the U87 over here. And just, just because I, I've thrown that into Omni. So I'm going to see what that sounds like in Omni. And what that's probably going to do, we might get a little bit of the, the sound of this room, but this is an extremely well-designed room. It's not really designed to give you a lot. It just sort of tends to have a little bit of high into it that enhances uh, speech for the most part, but uh, it's an interesting room that we have here at the Haas Media Studio for recording, and it's actually a really very effective place to record. Anyways, I've got all those microphones are all just crowded up on my little mini cube over here, and I'm gonna go back inside here and give it a try, um, give it a little guitar playing and see what happens. We're back in the console room and I've got the tracks set up in Pro Tools. I've gone ahead and made sure that all my condenser mics have uh, phantom power sent to them. Uh, and I've gone ahead and set all the gain levels coming in from the microphones. And some of them are different. Obviously the condenser mics are, don't need as much power because they have phantom power. They're more sensitive microphones. The dynamic mics need a bit more, and then the Royer needs a bit more than everybody else. So that's kind of the rule of thumb that I start with. And then I, have, I just try to make it so everything's pretty much across the board pretty even so that we, we don't have to do much clip gain changing later to try to get everything level. Because I want you to hear all of these different microphones at the exact same level if possible so you can really make a judgment. Because one of the things that we learn about uh, sound and being in the studio is that when we hear two different things, if one of them is louder, our brain automatically sort of says, oh, that is better. If it's 0.5 to 1 dB louder. When we try to do comparison shopping, we like to try to make sure we have our levels as close as possible so we can really, really hear the frequency differentiation, the spectral differences. So that's what we're, we're shooting for here. So I've got a bunch of tracks armed and ready to go. I'm not actually going to listen to all uh, nine of them. Oh, by the way, I should probably mention that uh, I have nine tracks coming in. So there were only eight tracks available for preamps on that particular uh, patch panel. So what I had to do is I had to put it into one of my three digit uh, mic inputs. And as I may have mentioned earlier, those three digit mic inputs come to the patch bay and they need to be patched into actual two digit uh, mic pre inputs 1 through 40. So anything from 1 to 40 has got a mic pre already on it, but then when we get to 109 on the board, I've got to then patch 109 in the patch bay from the wall to the input for 17. So now I've got that going into the MTXR 17 and I have to use the patch bay. So we, we sometimes use the patch bay here. We don't have to use it a lot, but when we do, uh, it's pr fairly straightforward. I've also still got my, uh, my direct line going, like I told you earlier, and that's also uh, rigged through the patch bay. So, in fact, what I could do if I really wanted to, I could just actually run the last guitar track that I did through all this, because I could just send that and reamp it and do it that way, but I'm gonna do reamping in a minute with some other situation. Uh, right now I'm just going to redo this track because I also wanted to try a couple of other longer chords. I want to do a couple of different looks on the guitar so you can still listen to staccato stuff, uh, uh, longer chords, some different stuff. Anyways, lead notes. Gives you some different things to choose from when you're listening to these mics. Alright, what do you say? Let's get to work. Alright.
Okay, here's our electric guitar session where we checked out a bunch of microphones, put them all out there. Let's find out what happened. And I played a, some squanky guitar in the studio. First of all, I got a bunch of 57s again. And this time though, instead of having the 57s being at different positions with the speaker, I've got them different distances from the speaker. So now we're gonna actually really have a phase thing happening between these things. Is what we got one capsule back and two capsules back. Up here are 57s in purple. I am going to start by just first hearing the DI a little bit. This mess up here that's all transients and crazy stuff. And you can see the difference between the DI signal and all of the guitar signals. They're all compressed and squashed because I'm doing a distorted guitar part. The electric guitar DI, of course, it has just transients all over the place. So let's hear a little bit of that and then I'm going to start zipping through our different tracks. Here it goes. <laughs> back. That's the center. The back. Two inches back. Let's compare it to the center. some of those together real quick. I'm just very curious about that. Here the came one eighty four here. is way back so let's add that to another thing here let's add that to the 57 so we're here in the room now let's hear the 414 instead that sounds a little phasier Thank 
I recommend downloading this session and listening to some different combinations of these microphones. And I recommend not going over three unless you start bringing out more of the bottom two microphones, the, the U87, which again is four feet back in an Omni, and then the 414 that's back two feet in a cardioid. And that 414 is really capturing a lot of power from the amp too, which is kind of cool. So you could add those together, bring those together with a 57 and possibly the Royer to fill it out, or just try different combinations of two or three Try four. When you start adding more, you're gonna start noticing the sound gets smaller as you start adding more and more mics once you get past three because of phase issues. Mix match, you can hear lots of different possibilities, but a lot of times we find a 57 is a good starting point. A 57 plus the 121 is a great combination. Uh, some of these other microphones like the KM184 has a lot of great possibilities. The, the 4033 has a different sort of a mid-range thing to it. The RE20 has its own thing. There's some taste things, but you want to do a little testing out, a little taste testing, and uh, see what you like best.